Hey and welcome back. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to hang your axe head on one of my premium grade replacement axe handles that come with walnut wedges. So we try to make this easier for you by getting the eye approximately to the shape of your axe head, but every axe head is going to have a different shaped eye. This means that you're going to have to remove material on the eye more than likely and learn how to custom fit to make sure that your axe head is straight custom fit your axe head on the handle and wedge it so it's securely on the handle. Let's do it. So the first step is going to be putting your axe head on top of the axe handle and seeing how close the fit is. Now, of course, since I'm putting this handle on one of the axe heads that I made, this is a pretty close fit to start with. We make it like that so we don't have to do as much work. But we also make these axe handles to a size that it will be very close to most other axes in this weight range. So depending on your axe, you may have to remove more material. If it's a little bit loose of a fit at first, then all that means is that you'll use a bigger wedge. So you'll have to do a little bit of customization to this. So we put the axe head on top of the handle and we can see that it just starts, it kind of sits on there to begin with, but it doesn't go down further than that. That's, that's about as far as it goes. Of course, we want to seat this down to about here. So we're going to have to do some um, hammering and removing material. So I first get the axe head on there and just kind of tap it down, get it seated, get it to where it's going on straight and then you can also check down the handle see if it's straight already which it is it's starting straight the one thing to remember is that even if your axe head is straight that doesn't necessarily mean it's going on the handle straight because if you are holding this handle at an angle when you're hammering it through or anything you can actually be cocking the head one way or the other and causing it to be crooked so it's something to be mindful of my axe handles come with a slightly radius drop off on the end of the handle here. You'll notice that on every single axe handle that we sell and I also chamfer the edges. These features are put in place to help you prevent breaking the handle when hammering it in. You can use a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer or a regular steel hammer. A dead blow hammer is probably going to be your safest bet. I'm just used to using a steel hammer but if you use a steel hammer you need to be very accurate make sure you don't hit the edges. Um, this rolled off part here though helps prevent from cracking so that if you do strike near the edge it rolls off and it doesn't hit a sharp corner which can easily chip. So now that I've got the axe head kind of sitting on there loosely I'm going to begin hammering in the handle down through the axe eye. You can hammer the handle through on a lot of different types of contraptions you can just use the vice jaws here with a gap between the jaws and hammer it through. I'm not going to be doing that because it's, it's a little high up and it's hard to hit. You can put two blocks of wood on the floor and hit between the blocks of wood. Really all sorts of things you could do. I've got this piece of steel down on the floor that I'm going to be using that already has a notch in it. So let's go ahead and start doing that. I'm going to begin hitting the end of this handle. Just trying to hit it as square as I can and just straight down. Try not to hold it at a strange angle. All right, now I'm going to chuck it. You can see that I've got a tight fit around the top of the head and we're almost flush with the top. And you can kind of judge by the resistance that you feel when you hit the handle, whether you can keep hammering or if you need to stop hammering. I'm going to hammer a little bit more. What you don't want to do is keep, keep hammering when there's a lot of resistance because you will break the handle. So. I'm going to hammer a little bit more. Okay, the pitch, the sound that the wood makes also changes when it's getting tighter. So that's about where I'm going to stop. You can see it's poking out the top a little bit, but I need to go further. That's not finished. And you can see here that we've got a little bit of material wood curling up around the axe head, which is a sign of a good tight fit. After I've done that, I'm going to check to make sure it's straight. It is still straight, so I don't need to make any sort of special markings, but I will demonstrate 
how to straighten a crooked axe head also. Now I'm going to take this handle out. If it doesn't come out just from doing that, then we can come over to a vise. You can put it in a vise like this, hammer down, or I have a tool for that. Just simply put this in here. Take a punch and lightly tap the handle out. And now we can see where the ox head is contacting the wood and where we need to remove material in order for this ox head to seat down further because we do need to go further. After the first hammering on the handle, we need to put it in a vise and this, these handles come with a nice finish on them so we want to try to protect that finish. It means less work for you in the end. A lot of store-bought axe handles come either way too thick, lumpy, or with varnish on them and you have to do work to them. We want to make it to where this axe handle comes to you and you don't have to spend a lot of time refinishing it. So we'll put a rag in there to protect that handle, clamp it down. And there's a variety of tools that you can use to remove the material now on the eye. I use a draw knife. We have several videos on how to use a draw knife, where to get a draw knife, what to look for in a draw knife on my YouTube channel. If you don't have a draw knife, you can use a rasp, you can use a spoke shave, you can use your pocket knife to whittle. This is very simple. Or you can use another axe even to whittle the wood away. All that we're going for here now is to remove the material where we see compression and rubbing. We're not going to do any draw knifing here where there's no color change, but I'm going to remove slight amount of material here. So start back here and just taper the, the wood. Flip the handle over, do the same thing on the other side. See, we're only removing this section here. We don't want to really take out a lot of material here, only down here where it's curling up. After that draw knifing or rasping or whittling, however you prefer to do this, we are going to put the handle back on and start hammering it back down the axe head. One little trick that you can do is tap the end of the axe handle with the head free hanging and that will actually drive the handle through, which is neat. So now we're back to where we were. Last time, I'm going to bring this back over to my contraption over here and hammer it through further. You can see we've made about another quarter inch of progress. We've curled up more around the edges. And I'm looking at the bottom now, making sure that we don't have any gaps, which we really don't. And then the top, we have a really nice fit around you are going to have a slight gap around the top, around the whole perimeter, which is expected. That's what you want. You're going to fill that up with a wedge. What you don't want are large gaps going in this direction. Those are harder to fill with a wedge than a gap in this direction. Now we're going to check for straightness. And it needs to be kicked, what we call kicked in a little bit. So this will be a good demonstration that I can show you how to fix that. We're going to take the handle back out.
But when I was looking at the ax head and checking for straightness, I could see that the head was cocked slightly this way, just ever so slightly. So I need to bring it back in. What I'm going to do is remove material on this side. And then when I hammer back through, I'll hold the handle at a slight angle. And what that will do is kick the ax head back in. This only needs to be very slight. The ax head is seated down far enough and we don't have any gaps. So we're pretty much done with all of that. What I need to do now is just make sure that it's straight. So I'm gonna do a little bit of kicking in. We'll put this back in the vise. Remove material where it needs to be dropped in. Check for straightness one last time and it's straight. It kicked that ax head in just slightly and it really doesn't take much. You don't have to remove a lot of the material. You don't have to hit it super hard to do that. As you're hammering the ax head, depending on like where you hold the angle of the head and everything, it can move the ax head in different ways. You can also move an ax head like this around the handle too. If you take material off of two opposite corners, it'll actually twist the ax head one way or the other. So you can manipulate how that ax head fits on the handle by removing material in certain areas and then holding it at different angles. We don't have any gaps around the bottom here and everything looks great on the top. So we are ready to move on to the next step, which is gonna be cutting the curve and getting our wedge ready for the handle. Now, before I take the ax head off, I'm gonna put two little pencil marks. Always use pencil, don't use marker because marker will get absorbed into the wood. I'm gonna use pencil marks on the front and back there. I'm not gonna trace around the whole ax head because that's not necessary. These are gonna help me determine where I need to stop cutting for my curve mark. So let's take the ax handle back out. More than likely, you're going to be using a handsaw of some sort or a bow saw or something like that. And this is probably actually a better method to do unless you're doing it like where I am, where it's a business and we need to do it faster. Your handsaw is going to be more accurate though with less practice. So it's worth noting that depending on the size of your ax, your kerf width needs to change on small hatchets you can go with a thinner kerf. On larger axes, you're gonna to wanna to really widen the kerf out. And it's gonna be wider than your handsaw blade. So what you'll need to do is go back in with the handsaw blade at an angle and kind of ream out the slot, make it wider. You'll see me do that a little bit on the bandsaw. wedges that we send come slightly oversized. This allows you to remove material if you need to, or if you need the thicker wedge, the bigger, wider wedge, if your head is, eye is slightly too large, then this helps fill it up. So what we do is we put our ax head on a table. 
we take the wedge that comes with this and we just put it on the top and we see how well it fits it. I can see here it's about about an eighth of an inch too wide this way. So that needs to be trimmed down. We want it to be the exact size of the eye. We don't want it slightly under, slightly over. It needs to be a tight fit that's exactly the right size. And I've also checked to make sure that this wedge isn't too long. So I put this wedge up to our kerf and I can see that that is just the right size. So I don't need to make it any shorter. I don't need to make this wedge any thinner either. So what I'm going to focus on doing is removing a little bit of material here. I'm going to be doing that with a pocket knife just because for demonstration's sake many of you don't have grinders that you can just quickly grind a wedge down with. So I'm going to be using a pocket knife. So I'm just going to carefully whittle this wood down. Which is actually a lot funner than using a grinder anyways. So this would be a really fun weekend project or afternoon project. Hanging an axe head. We're going to check frequently. Showing that you don't need fancy tools. So, I mean, you could do the whole thing with a pocket knife. The next step, now that I've got this wedge fitting in there really tight, is going to be to cut off the edges or the corners of the wedge. This small detail makes this whole process of wedging the axe handle so much easier. It's these little details um, because right now this is a square. We have square edges on here and the eye is not square, it's round. And that squareness causes resistance. Otherwise, you'd have to grind the wedge down narrower and then you'd have gaps. So what we do is actually take the corners off of the wooden wedge. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to highly recommend it. It took me a long time to learn this trick. We do it to every single wedge that we put in an axe head because it just makes everything easier and nicer looking. So I'm just whittling off these corners, turning the ends of the wedge more rounded. It'll go in smoother. When it goes in smoother, that means you're going to be hammering your handle less hard, which means you're not going to damage your handle. You get a nicer looking fit, nicer looking fit, a tighter fit is also a functionally a better fit. I'm putting the head back on and we're getting ready for the moment of truth. That's going to be wedging on the head to the handle. And there's a trick to this. We don't put the axe head down all the way to where it was seated before yet. We kind of put it halfway down right now. We're going to add some wood glue. This is just regular tight bond wood glue. You do not want to use epoxy or things that get brittle when they get hard. Wood glue is an extremely strong, flexible bond between wood. So it is great to use in the kerf. We don't glue the metal to the wood. We glue this wooden wedge to the hickory wood, wood to wood. 
So put that glue in the kerf. Get this wedge started by tapping it down. Make sure it's going in straight, nice and even. All right, just till it gets a little bit tight. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now we're gonna go over to an anvil or a, the, a concrete floor or a vise or something that we can hammer on. The method that I use to fit this minimizes damage and cracking to the wedge and it allows you to tighten the axe head on the handle while the wedge is being driven in. So instead of hitting the wedge directly, which would cause cracking and splintering and you'd break the wedge off and it would be ugly and terrible. What we do is we hit the end of the axe handle and put the wedge against a hard object. The reason that we don't seat the head all the way up against where we just seat it is because as I hit this wedge and as I hit the end of the handle, this axe head is gonna move up the handle like that. If I were to seat this head up to this point before I start hammering on the handle, it would hammer, it would, it would bring the axe head too far up the handle, it would ruin our fit and could likely even come off the shoulder and destroying the whole project. So you always start up high enough to give yourself room for the axe head to come up and then ultimately meet where that line is when the wedge is in. Ready? All right, so we've seated the head now. We did get a, a little bit of cracking on the wedge, but that amount is fairly normal. What happens if you hit straight down on the wedge, it will just splinter and destroy, and then you don't have a wedge anymore. So you can see at the top of the wedge, there's some cracks. These actually disappear in the next step. Um, we're gonna be trimming this material off here, and we'll have a really nice, clean-looking wedge. And we see we filled all the gaps here. There's no gaps around there. And if you look at the top of the handle here, you'll see that it's actually flared out. So that handle is not coming off at all. And the wedge is glued to the hickory now. So again, for this step, you want to use a handsaw. That's a nice fit. We're on to the finishing touches now of this axe handle fitment. We make these, we dress, we dress these ends of the handles nicely so that you can leave this just like that. You can have that look. You see I didn't really dent up the handle that bad with a hammer. If you want, you can like sand that a little bit to take out the discoloration. But if you're careful with your hammering, then this will pretty much stay nice. And then the top here is bandsaw cut. Now, you can leave it just like this. You can call this done. Simply because I'm actually hanging one of these axe heads that's gonna be going to a customer. In this video, I'm gonna finish out this axe handle the way that we do all of our axe handles that come on our axes. So I'm gonna be using the grinder and taking off this material right here and then smoothing up the top. This could be an idea for those of you who want to take a little bit of an extra step and finish out your axe handle nicer. You can do this with a grinder, you can do this with a, a pocket knife, you can do this with a file, a rasp, sandpaper, etc. If you want to take an extra step in making your axe handle nicer and more versatile, you can also drill a hole in the end of the handle 
This can go for a paracord to go into so you can wrap it around your arm if you're in an environment where they require paracord wrapped around your hand when using an ax, which uh, like at summer camps or stuff like that is pretty common. Or um, also if you're just looking for a way to attach it to your backpack or if you want to hang this on a wall, hanging an ax like this is a great way to store it. You usually don't want to hang it up against a wall like this in a shed or anything because with heat and cold and wet and dry, your ax handle can actually warp and bow because there's not even pressure on the handle. So you, having it just hang straight up and down is always the best way to store it. Let's just drill a quick hole. This concludes the how to fit your axe handle tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. And if I missed anything, just let me know in the comments and I can try to address it. From here, I oil the handle. I use boiled linseed oil and I sometimes cut it with turpentine as a thinner. This helps the oil penetrate the wood faster and it helps dry the wood faster after you take it out of the oil. We try to give you an ax handle that is already finished nicely to reduce the amount of work that you need to do to this part of the handle. We make sure that we pay attention to the details on the ends of the handle to help prevent you from cracking the handle. And we also make sure that we have the eye and the wedge slightly oversized. That way you can have the option of customizing it to your ax head. Just understand that depending on your ax head, you may have to do more work than other axe heads. You may have to remove more material, do more whittling, etc. Just play around with it and have fun. These are great weekend projects or afternoon projects to do and mess with. So again, if you have any questions, just let me know and we'll see you next time.